to you the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his character as a person his physical features and a little bit about his general character i want you now to imagine that this human being has popped up in front of you has walked through this door and you don't know who he is the first thing you're going to notice is what it's physical features, right? That's the first thing we do. When somebody walks in, we look at their physical features and our minds start telling us lots of, lots of things about that person. We start to think about, I wonder who this person is. Is he handsome? What does he look like? Does he look strong? Does he look soft? Where did he come from? And you start reading his features. So let's inshallah begin with knowing who this man is, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will begin today by talking about his physical appearance, how he used to look, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And realize that it is the sunnah of Allah, it is the custom of Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends prophets and messengers with the most perfect characteristics, inner and outer. And the reason he does so, is so that mankind has no reason to ex reject this messenger. Every messenger has come with the most perfect characteristics, the most perfect mannerisms, and also perfect images as well. So the prophets as a general rule are all handsome in nature, and they are all with beautiful characteristics. Rubayyah binti Mu'awwid, one of the Sahabiyat, when her son asked her, what was the Prophet like? This is later on after he has passed away and she is now an old lady. So people are coming to eagerly describe the Prophet wasallam. And so all she could say was, Ya Bunay, oh my dear son, if you were to have seen him, you would have thought that the sun had risen up. That's all he could describe. I don't know how to describe it to you. If you were to have seen him, you would have thought that the sun has now risen up. This is the rising sun. And it is amazing that Rubayyah describes him as a son, beautiful son, Ka'ab ibn Malik describes him as a moon. Ka'ab ibn Malik, another famous companion, that he said that whenever the Prophet ﷺ was happy, his face would light up as if it was the full moon. And it is beautiful that the Sahaba are describing the Prophet ﷺ with what they know to be the most beautiful, and that is the sun and the moon. So we have one Sahabi, as she's saying, he's like the sun shining. Another one is saying he's like the full moon. And of course, there's a beautiful hadith, which is well known to many of you. And that is the hadith of Jabir ibn Samura, who says that he was going home one day in the middle of the night. And it was a clear moon in the uh, sky. And he's walking home and he just happens to pass by the Prophet ﷺ, who was also out in the middle of the night. Uh, in the streets of Medina, and he was wearing a red hulla, this red hulla like the red over covering. And he said, I looked at the face of the Prophet ﷺ, and I looked at the full moon. Now he's physically comparing the two, right? Well, it's amazing, he's literally comparing the two. I looked at the face of the Prophet ﷺ, and there is the full moon. Fawallahi, he said, he was more beautiful in my eyes than the full moon. And this really shows us that Allah had given the Prophet ﷺ not just these physical, but these spiritual characteristics that is just emanating from Him. And one of my favorite uh, introductions, if you like, to this whole topic, we're not actually describing Him yet. We're simply saying how the Sahaba could not describe Him. They couldn't describe how, how handsome He was because it was too much for them. Whoever unexpectedly saw Him, would stand in awe of him. In other words, just if you weren't expecting to see him, you saw him, you would just stop for a millisecond. So much reverence from his body emanating. He would stand in awe of him. He was monumental, grand in nature. He was taller than a, a moderate build, but not exceedingly tall. Because both are, if you see somebody who's very tall, it's strange. Amongst even tall people, it seems strange. If you see somebody short, then also it's noticeable. 
but he was of a middle stature inclining towards heights because everything about him was middle everything even his physical description his color was a middle color he wasn't pasty white and he wasn't black he was of inclining toward light skin because of the racism in human beings I mean that that's a re, one of the hikmah of that has to do with stupidity in human beings in distinguishing between people because of color he inclined towards light but he wasn't pasty white he was a color like the, what we call the harvest moon and his hair was neither straight nor curly it was wavy it was middle everything about him was middle he didn't speak slow and he didn't speak fast he speaked in a moderate tone his words were neither too short nor were they excessive but they were always just right when he spoke people felt as if exactly the right amount of words were used everything about him was moderation he had a full head and his his hair was wavy if he parted it then it parted it never went past the lobes of his ears if he allowed it to go long because sometimes he would cut it for ibadah like the umrah or the hajj when he shaved but when he let it it went to the lobes of his ears and in some riwaya just above the shoulder wasi al jabin he had a large forehead which in physiognomy traditionally was an indication of high quality and then his eyebrows they were full and there was a slight space between them and then he had a vein on his forehead that if he got upset they could see the vein sallallahu alaihi wasallam the upper part of his nose was aquiline so he had a beautiful nose that had a like a bridging on the upper part and he had a light that came from that area of his uh, his face that was clearly discernible he had a full beard and his eyes were very dark he had a high beautiful cheek he had a, a mouth that was full so that when he spoke he was his pronunciation was perfect ashnab mufallaj his teeth were beautiful there was slight space in the teeth daqiq al masruba he had a light hair on his chest which was manliness without having a lot of uh, hair wa ka'anna unaqahu jidu dunya his neck was like a gazelle's neck. He had a beautiful neck and a high neck. And it was like a gazelle's neck. It had like a, a beautiful, like a silvery clarity to it. Mu'tadil al-khalq. He was balanced in all of his outward aspects. Badinan. He had a strong build. Mutamasikan. And it was all perfectly formed. Sawa' al-batni wa sadar. His stomach and his chest were equal. He never had a large stomach. He had no paunch. Even when he was in his uh, 60s, his stomach was always flat. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli alayhi. Mushih al-Sadri, he was full-chested. And ba'eeda ma bayna al-mankibayn, his shoulders were broad. And he had a large bone. Also his trachea, where it met there, there was space. And then he had a light hair also on his stomach. He had no hair over his breasts. He had hair on his arms and some on his shoulders and the upper part of his chest. And he was had large full hands and full palms and his feet were arched and he was sinewy and strong limbs were strong and he had full calves his feet were very smooth which was also because they were desert people and they walked a lot and people's feet would have a lot of um, roughness to them but his feet were so smooth that water would pour off sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then when he walked he walked softly honan 
because the Quran says wa ibadar rahman alladhina yamshuna ala al-ardi hawna he walked like that when he walked he would walk briskly fast it is sunnah to walk fast when he walked he would walk briskly as if he's descending down a slope in other words he's so fast it's as if he's walking down the slope some scholars have also said that it is as if allah made the earth mudhallal so allah made the earth uh, humble to him that wherever he's walking it's as if the earth is 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 giving him the place to walk right uh, and others said this is metaphorical what it means is that uh, that the prophet ﷺ would walk briskly and he's walking so fast that most of us we can only walk like that when we're going down an inclined plane and that is how he would generally uh, walk when he turned he would turn to face with his whole body so he's walking somebody calls him he doesn't say yes no he turns to face him with his whole body and subhanallah modern present presenters and modern speakers they tell you the exact same advice that when you speak to somebody never speak with your head turned turn your whole, face him speak with him one on one and this we find written 14 centuries ago and as a footnote here just a side point i read a lot of books about public speaking a lot of books about present, presenting and whatnot wallahi every single point of benefit that we find we find that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has exactly done this he looked more at the ground than he did uh, up his his glance was generally down because of the power of his glance and then uh, most of his looking was mulahaza when he looked at people he didn't maintain his stare he would look and then move away so as he looked at people he never fixed his focus on people uh, because uh, of of the effect that that would have on the people and then he said to him Describe for me how he spoke sallallahu alaihi wasallam what was his uh... and he said kana rasulullah sallallahu mutawasil al ahzan mutawasil al ahzan means like the pure arabic translation he was always grief stricken but the ulama who commented on that hadith have said that that does not mean that he was depressed what that means is that if you looked at him like if you saw him in the mosque sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam if you saw him in the mosque and you looked at him you would think that he was grief stricken because the istighraq his presence with his lord was so intense that his face would have a sense of being completely absorbed in thought and so people that would look at him would think that he had huzn but it was actually shiddat al istighraq and that's why the ulama say the other hadith who kana daim al bishara that he was always happy the ulama say that when he was with al khaliq kana daim al ahzan lamma kana ma al khalq kana daim al bishara when he was with his creator that he was in a state of deep contemplation when he was with creation he was happy he smiled he always looked at people and smiled and made them feel joyful he never made people feel depressed the best beautiful feature of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was when he smiled by far the smile of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the most beloved thing to the companions and to anyone who saw him they said when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam smiled we felt that jannah was on earth and the sun had shined upon us everybody felt amazing like they didn't live on earth when the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam smiled they used to say we could wallahi swear as if sunshine was coming out of his face literally we could almost see as though we are reflecting off him he laughed at things that they laughed at he told jokes he liked to yamzahu and aisha said kana mazahan fil bayt he was always joking with us in the house qal an nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qalu amzahu wa la aqulu illa al haqq I joke but I never tell a lie in my jokes always I speak the truth and then another time uh, a woman ajuz came up to him and said ya rasulullah adkhul al jannah am i going to go to paris he said la tadkhul lana al jannah uh, ajuz old women don't go to paradise and she became so upset and then he laughed and said satadkhulina shabba you're going to go in young and youthful and then she was happy the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never he never wore silk he never wore gold 
He never dressed arrogantly. He never dressed ostentatiously. He never walked proud, arrogant. He never appeared in front of people like he was a king or an emperor, even when he was the absolute ruler. One could enter a hall like this, and the Prophet ﷺ could be sitting among his companions as you are sitting. And it was common for people to look around and want to think he should be sitting up someplace in a chair on a throne like other leaders. He should be wearing some gown of gold. He should be wearing some kind of crown. He should be a man with people around him serving him. But when they came in and they looked around, it was a common question. Who is Muhammad? Where is he? No one could tell who was the Prophet وسلم, among his followers because his clothes and what he ate and where he chose to sit was never different from the other people. You tell me, name one leader in the world that could compare with that. And as for his bravery, وسلم, Anas ibn Malik said that once in Medina, in the middle of the night, the people heard a loud commotion and a loud sound coming. And they didn't know what it was. So timidly, they came outside their houses, wondering what is this noise? Is an enemy attacking? Is there uh, some type of beast out on the loose? What is happening? And they found that the Prophet ﷺ had already gone in the direction of the sound alone. And he found the horse of Abu Talha, and he simply rode it without a saddle. That's manliness. <laughs> Without a saddle. And he's galloping towards the sound and he had his sword around his neck because he's galloping without a saddle. And he's coming back to the people of Medina saying, you have nothing to fear, I've checked it out, you have nothing to fear. And Asid Malik is narrating one incident, right? What does that show us of the bravery that he hears the sound, he's the first person to go jump on a horse without even the saddle, takes his sword, run, and then he's running back to the people of Medina. I've checked it out, nothing to fear. Whatever it was, it wasn't anything for them to be worried about. This is the bravery of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, never in his life did he ever lift his hand to hit any human being, ever. Not a servant, not a wife, not a child, not a friend, nor an enemy, except when that enemy was opposing Allah and opposing the message. Then the Prophet وسلم, turned into a tiger, into a lion, and he transformed from someone that the companions and the people said, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He was as gentle He was as shy as a virgin on her wedding night hiding behind a curtain He was that kind of man He was that pious He was that shy He was that gentle in his speech Yet it was said that when the Prophet وسلم, was met on a battlefield, he was ferocious in defending Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the companions of the Prophet وسلم, used to look for him on the battlefield, they said, Wallahi, we found him in the middle of the enemies, fighting. And they said, we used to seek the protection of his person. We used to hide behind the Prophet وسلم, on the battlefield. He was such a warrior and statesman on the battlefield, commanding and fighting for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But once he was off the battlefield, his eyes were downcast and he was speaking softly and he was gentle and he was warm and he was sacred and soft and caring and crying 
because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وَمَا أَرْسَرْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةِ لِلْعَالَمِينَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have been sent as a mercy to the whole world. Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad, Ya Nabi, Salam Alayka, Ya Rasul, Salam Alayka, Ya Habib, Salam Alayka, Salawatullah Alayka.